a very good morning students today's topic is industrially important microorganisms myself dr ragasuda head and assistant professor department of microbiology government city college we'll discuss on properties of microorganisms industrially important microbes their isolation screening maintenance strain improvement Industrial microbiology associates with the commercial exploitation of microbes for the benefit of mankind. Industrially important microbes are metabolic specialists capable of synthesizing one or more products in high yield. These products may have a direct or indirect impact on economic, environment and social parameters of the society. Industrially important microorganisms bear some properties to enable them to you be used in industries. These microorganisms are expected to grow in inexpensive culture media such as corn strip liquor and whey. They should be capable of growing and producing desirable product in large scale cultures. They should grow fast and produce product in short period and preferably Uh, they are they should produce spores for easy inoculation into large fermenters these organisms are usually non pathogenic in nature and they are genetically engineerable industrially important microorganisms include bacteria fungi yeast as per yeast and actinomycetes let us begin with fungi the genus of fungi under this are rhizopus mucar neurospora aspergillus and penicillium rhizopus is known to have eight species out of which three are of industrial and medical importance they are rhizopus microsporus var oligosporus rhizopus oryze rhizopus tolenifer rhizopus microsporus var oligosporus is used in production of fumaric acid lactic acid and cortisone it is also known to be used for uh, production of fermented soya beans known as temph Rhizopus oryze otherwise known as Rhizopus arhesus is used in production of lactic acid and cortisone it is also used for alcohol fermentation and uh, is used for biopsion of uh, heavy metals uh, which is the passive adsorption of chemical contaminants by these microorganisms Rhizopus tolenifer also known as black bread mold This fungi is known to cause fruit rot on strawberries, tomatoes and sweet potato. It is used in the commercial production of fumaric acid, lactic acid and cortisone. This is a picture of Rhizopus tolenifer. On one side you can see its growth on a bread and the other side the magnified view, microscopic view of Rhizopus tolenifer which consists of sporangiophores, stolon and rhizoids. The next fungi is mucar which includes species like mucar racemosus mucar roxi which are be known to be used in amylo process for the saccharification of starch mucar helps to ripe some cheese like gamlost and are also used in making certain oriental foods some species of mucar like mucar sufi are used in fermentation of bean curd known as mucar bean curd This is the image, microscopic image of mucar, which comprises of sporangium, spores, sporangiophores, hyphae, and mycelium. Morphologically, rhizopus and mucar share similar structure, except uh, in case of rhizopus, we see we come across rhizoids, whereas rhizoids are absent in mucar. The next fungi is Neurospora. In Neurospora, Neurospora cytophila is an important species in foods. Sometimes it is also known as red bread mold as it imparts red color to the bread. It grows on sugar veggies and on various foods. Image of Neurospora. The next 
The next fungi is aspergillus. It is used in industrial fermentation and in production of enzymes and organic acids. Aspergillus flavors and aspergillus oryzae group are important in making oriental foods and production of enzymes. Aspergillus glacus group with aspergillus ripens and cause food spoilage whereas the mo these molds naturally grow well in high concentration of sugar and salt and hence uh, they grow in many food of low moisture content. On the other side, aspergillus flavors and parasiticus are known to produce carcinogenic agents known as aflatoxins. Structure of aspergillus which comprises of conidae, phyllidae, metulae, vesicules, condophores and hyphae. The next fungi is Pencilium. Pencilium is uh, known to be used very well in food industry. Pencilium Camberti is useful in ripening of camber cheese. Pencilium Roqueforti is used in ripening of blue cheese or no, also known as Roquefort cheese. Pencilium involves in food spoilage and uh, it is also known for production of mycotoxins. And these, uh, some of the species of Pencilium are known to cause uh, uh, plant diseases like Pencilium expansum, also known as blue-green spore molds. They cause soft rot in most of the fruits. Pencilium digitatum causes soft rot in citrus fruits. And uh, Pencilium itali italicum, also known as blue contact mold, is known for rotting citrus fruits. Mostly students get confused with the structure of aspergillus and pencilium. So this slide shows the difference between aspergillus and pencilium wherein we can see the vesicles uh, are uh, present. The vesicle is not branched in case of aspergillus whereas uh, in pencilium the vesicle is branched to form metula. Moving to the next type of microorganism, yeast. In yeast, Saccharomyces, Zygosaccharomyces, Candida and Rhodotorula are known to be of inter industrial importance. Yeasts are known to be used in uh, various uh, food industries like in bakery, Saccharomyces cerevisiae is used. In beer industry, Saccharomyces cerevisiae and Saccharomyces uh, uvarum is being used. In uh, food uh, in food industry and uh, like uh, preparation of food and feed, Candida tropicalis, Candida pseudotropicalis, Candida utilis, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, Claviromyces fragalis and are being used whereas in feed as feed is Candida lipolytica is being used. Wine making for wine making Saccharomyces cerevisiae var ellipsoidis is being used. Wine making, especially sparkling wine, is produced by Saccharomyces bananus. Industrial alcohol or spirit is produced by Saccharomyces cerevisiae. If the pro, if the medium is whey, then Saccharomyces fragilis is used. And various yeast products are been used by Saccharomyces is been produced by Saccharomyces cerevisiae. Moving on to the next group of microorganisms, bacteria. In bacteria, Agrobacterium tumificans is used for production of transgenic plants. Escherichia coli is used as a genetic tool, whereas Lactobacillus is used in production of lactic acid and many fermented foods. Rhizobium is used for uh, producing uh, nitrogen fixing, uh, fixing in plants. Cornibacterium glutamicum is used in production of amino acid called glutamic acid. Bacillus thuringiens is used as a biopesticide. Uh, today we have Bt cotton and Bt brinjal etc. Pseudomonas putida is used to treat oil spills in oceans and seas. Mm -hmm. So what, uh, what is the strategy behind uh, these uh, microorganisms when they are being of inter industrial importance. So first uh, step is to isolate microorganisms from natural sources, identify uh, uh, the desirable microorganisms from these natural sources, then characterize them, screen them, improve uh, their strains for production of more yield or products, then they are uh, used in industries. The first step is isolation of microorganisms. 
there are two ways of obtaining strains of industrial importance one is isolation of microbes from the natural habitats second is obtaining pure cultures from organizations such as american type culture collection atcc usa commonwealth mycological institute england fermentation research institute japan research institute of antibiotics russia when it comes to india we have two institutes which provide pure cultures one is national center for microbial resources pune imtech chandigarh in order to isolate microorganism from nat natural resources a variety of complex uh, isolation procedures have been employed out of which the best are specialized enrichment culture techniques example soil treatment select use of uh, selective inhibitors like anti metabolites antibiotics then uh, giving uh, variation in nutri uh, nutritional media putting uh, desirable nutrients into the media for uh, growing selectable uh, organisms or uh, giving variations in physiological parameters like ph temperature aeration etc for example isolation from soil some of the techniques used are sponging dilution gradient plate or viable count method aerosol dilution floating differential centrifugation usually these methods are used in conjugation of enrichment culture technique the next step is screening screening means it is a procedure of isolation detection and separation of microorganisms or metabolites of our interest from a mixed population by using highly selective methods called screening screening deals with low cost rapid growth and easy to handle methods apart from this already identified or known microorganisms can be uh, the data of these known microorganisms can be obtained from computer based databases which provide detailed information about already existing microbial antibiotic compounds screening is performed in two stages stage 1 is primary screening the second one is secondary screening primary screening uh, includes a set of highly selective procedures which allow the detection and isolation of microorganisms producing the desired metabolite and uh, primary screening includes uh, the following techniques number 1 is sample collection number 2 is culture culture includes uh, uh, media formulation inoculum preparation and incubation three is activity test that is biochemical activities of the microorganisms are performed at this level and based on the bio, biochemical uh, tests uh, they are characterized and later they are identified the next stage of screening is secondary screening so once we have a desirable microorganism it is necessary to assess its commercial value and know whether it is environmental friendly or uh it is uh, it is it produces some toxicities or uh, it is also essential to know whether it is pathogenic or not and uh, it is good to know if any new products are been produced by these uh, organisms and what is the economic stability of these organisms and genetic stability also is essential to assess at this stage because most of the microorganisms tend to undergo mutations very frequently in addition to this cultural conditions media composition and fermentation conditions are also uh, determined at the secondary screening stage the next step is maintenance once a desirable microorganism is been obtained it is very necessary to maintain them or store them there are various methods of storage of these microorganisms of which the most frequently used are uh, low temperature storage uh, uh, followed by frozen culture or lyophilization cells method or liquid nitrogen method in low temperature storage 2 to 6 degree centigrade uh, is been used uh, in which the microorganisms can be preserved for about 2 to 6 months whereas in frozen culture minus 20 to minus 100 degree centigrade is used where we can store the organism for longer period and uh, if we want to store the microorganism for uh, relatively longer period for years together then lyophilization method or liquid nitrogen method has been implemented lyophilization is done at 5 to 
minus 70 degrees centigrade under vacuum whereas uh, liquid nitrogen the temperature used is minus 196 degrees centigrade. The next method is strain improvement. Now we have the microorganism it has been produ is pro producing a desirable product then how to improve or enhance uh, the uh, amount of product being produced by the microorganism. So in the science and technology of manipulating and improving microbial strains in order to enhance their metabolic capabilities for biotechnological applications are referred to as strain improvement. Strain improvement is necessary to reduce production cost, media and product cost to ensure safety to see that it is not toxic or pathogenic to increase efficiency to increase the yield to see the uh, to see that uh, the product is in its pure form and uh, what is the longevity of the microorganism or the product increase the stability of the product and microorganism as well and uh, uh, other aspects like uh, genetic stability and uh, its incorporation in continuous culture probability of uh, microorganism growing in a continuous culture the methods used for strain improvement are recombinant dna technology mutation and recombination recombinant dna technology also known as genetic engineering or rdna technology or molecular cloning or gene cloning this technology enables isolation of genes from an organism this gene can be amplified studied altered and put into another organism in this way we are able to obtain certain products like uh, insulin, interferons, growth hormones, enzymes, proteinases, etc. RDNA causes production of recombinant proteins. They help in protein modification. They are also used for uh, uh, seeing whether uh, the, uh, the microorganism is able to produce a new substrate, uh, able to utilize a new substrate or it is able to produce a new metabolite of interest and at the same time enhance metabolite production and enhance growth of the microorganism. The next type of strain improvement technique in use is mutations. Mutations are sudden and heritable changes in the trait of an organism. Application of mutagens to induce mutations is known as mutagenesis. These mutations can be done in two ways, natural mutations and induced mutations. Whatever might be the kind of mutation ultimately they are aimed to bring about market changes in the biochemical characteristics of practical interest called major mutations for example streptomyces griseus a wild strain produce small strain of streptomycin and large amount of manosido streptomycin which has low antibiotic activity so a mutation in this wild strain can make the uh, new strain to produce more amount of streptomycin and less amount of Manosido streptomycin. Another good example is streptomyces aureofaciens, where the mutant strain produces 6 D methyl tetracycline instead of tetracycline, which is a major commercial form of tetracycline. Next, moving on to the next method of strain improvement is recombination. It is defined as formation of new gene combinations among those present in different strains. It is used for genetic analysis and strain improvement. It is used to bring desirable alleles present in two or more strains into a single strain, wherein it can increase the product yield or generate a new product. Recombination is usually performed in two met three methods, sexual reproduction, in case of bacteria it is done by conjugation, parasexual cycle in case of asexual fungi, protoplast fusion, a technique uh, called as polyethylene glycol treatment is done in order to fuse uh, protoplasts of two different species. Uh, The next uh, part is strategies to enhance product yield. So what are the strategies to use it to enhance product yield? In order to obtain or maintain a competitive economic position for new or existing fermentations or products, it is necessary to find a means to increase the yield of the product. Various stages of screening and fermentations, fermentation process development have uh, provided parameters to accumulate high yield. Nevertheless, 
Further increase in yield can be obtained by additional adjustments in aeration and agitation rate, small or large change in the relative concentration of certain media components, slight to moderate change in pH, adjusting inoculum level, type or quantity of inoculum used, then examination of precise harvest time, adjustment of fermentation conditions during inoculum buildup and production of greatest genetic stability of the organism. However, an improvement in fermentation uh, product recovery can be the most important for increasing the yield and economics. Revision of techniques used for production, product recovery so that fewer steps are involved can reduce the loss of product in each step. Another important aspect is an attempt to alter the genetic makeup of the microbial cell so that more carbon and other metabolites are shunted through the metabolic sequences leading to the product formation. Genetic makeup altered may be altered by mutations, sexual reproduction, transduction, transformation, etc. Thank you.